What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Brandon Leak, one of your four hosts for the podcast called Poets in Politics. And to my left, we have... Two cents. And to my right, we got... And yes, and... Stacey G. So welcome to today's podcast. From last week, or last month, I should say, you guys know that we were just doing a basic intro, introducing ourselves so that we guys understood who we were. And for our winner, you're going to, from our comments for last month you're going to see your post right here. Aww. We loved Shred. your poem, yeah. and we will talk about it upon our next podcast that we end up shooting. So we got you. Hi. Um, but what our discussion point today is, and I'm excited to get all of your guys' feedback on, is a discussion about art in schools nationally and locally. Um, it's no surprise that when... When ish hits the fan and finances get a little bit tight, um, that schools end up cutting resources from art programs first and foremost. And it's never the athletic programs that get cut. Uh, it's it's never the programs based around um, some of the quote unquote non essentials aside from art programs that end up losing their funding. And I'd, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and reasonings as to why that is mm. and we'll dive into some of the articles because we got some articles those will be in the description below for you guys to tap into <laughs> on on like some of the research that we've done into why those things happen yeah. so why do you guys think that arts in particular things like music and literary arts are always on the short end of the stick when it comes to school funding i mean like the the real easy answer is that America, the United States specifically, has never valued art. We valued productivity in the workplace mm -hmm. over expression of self. And that's like the short answer. <laughs> <laughs> Until they bored at home not watching no television. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And we don't or can't get no music. That, like everything that is in like look at this. This man's laptop is covered in art. And you don't think of it as Swing. art. You don't think of Supreme as art. But that label there comes from an artist. This label comes from an artist. Everything, vans, all of this, but we don't respect it. We just treat it like it's part of the workplace instead of mm -hmm. an artist. You know, like a graphic designer doesn't get treated like an artist. They get treated mm -hmm. like a part of the workforce. I love this topic because I uh, think that standardized testing is like the main um is like the main goal that schools try to aim towards mm. and like they build curriculum and gear classrooms around standardized testing it's like how well can this student remember this answer to this question mm -hmm. and like think in a certain way um because it's just i've seen that shift growing up um in the education system and seeing that change happen from um a more like creative allow the teachers to do the curriculum and like gear it to the way that they want to and then change to like star testing i don't know what's it called now it's like, uh it's called there's so many different things like i i'm a t i'm a, i teach full time and yeah. and like it's it's one of those things where like you, every two years the name of the test changes <laughs> and it's like oh hey like guess what our Fix test it. results our test Marketing results weren't that great on this one so we're gonna go with <laughs> that one that showed us like being like 30 percent higher or whatever yeah. so but i feel you yeah. like yeah. standardized testing it's like we were like training students to take a test rather than teaching them how to learn and think and create mm -hmm. and i think art is like one of those things that they're they devalue because mm -hmm. it's not something it's not like a something that you can uh, qu quantify um, yes. you can't just yeah. put like numbers to like an art piece you there's know? no wrong answer to an art question right yeah. or to right. art i want you to draw this and get a a b c or d <laughs> on your selection sheet <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like how do you answer a question about, I mean, like there's art history and whatnot yeah. and there's value there. But at the same time, it's like, how do you, how do you like grade a, um, a student's like artwork on how creative they are? What's that? <laughs> it, this is just like a reflection of what you're talking about yeah. in terms of like, like there's this meme and I'll put it on the screen oh, for you guys to see easier. And essentially what it says is for a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam. Yeah. Please climb the tree and you'll see an animal such as a bird, a snake, a monkey, a penguin, an elephant, a fish, and what appears to be a seal and a dog of some sort. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, yo, like, of course, some people mm -hmm. excel higher in particular functions right. if you've given us all the same portions, but like, 
inevitably you're going to be underservicing particular populations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and how about you, man? I mean, because I understand that everybody learns differently. There's the kinesthetic learners, the visual, auditory, all mm -hmm. stuff learners. And um, so in my old high school, I valued art because, well, I was, I grew up learning to value art. Mm -hmm. uh, my pops was a musician, taught me how to play instruments because he believed that learning music, learning how to read music was getting ahead in class. Mm -hmm. And so I let my growing up with that kind of lead me into what my senior project was about in school, which was musicology, the study of music and music is, I believe, one of the big arts in schools. Uh, it's part of isn't it, it's part of the A in the STEAM program, right? Uh, Not anymore. Oh yeah, now for STEAM. Yeah. yeah. Okay, for STEAM. Yeah. But just recently, so mm -hmm. STEM for forever. Yeah, yeah it started. <laughs> off with STEM, didn't it? Yeah. And then someone went, "Wait, we're missing art." Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Don't get hot on me. We'll put STEAM. Back on. STEAM. STEAM. <laughs> nah, but um, I think art is a good way to integrate. All the aspects of learning, the yeah. math, the the literature, the, the all that stuff. I think it's a good way to integrate it because it's, I don't know, I learn stuff differently. Like, I know I learn stuff differently. And my being able to grasp that fact improved my ability to learn everything else mm -hmm. by applying art to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it takes just such, like, examination of self. And it teaches how to look into yourself, like poetry. For me, for I know, I'm pretty sure everybody here, it's an examination of yourself and learning how to write it mm -hmm. has only helped you be introspective yeah. and figure out the world around you. And the fact that we're kind of pushing that aside, mm -hmm. it, I'm really worried about kids as they grow older, not having that education in school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Honestly, because I mean, like one... One extremely valuable aspect, and you can check this in some of the articles that you'll see linked down below, is that art is one of the largest developers of critical thinking Yes. in terms of student population. And not critical thinking in the, the typical sense, yeah. but uh, critical thinking in a sense where you can essentially not find a wrong answer, but instead be able to find a multitude of differing viewpoints yes, yes. on a concept. Yes. Because what ends up happening, as, as talked about in these standardized tests, it's like, oh, hey, let's get you to regurgitate this information for me so that way I can see that I did not waste my money on buying all these textbooks mm -hmm. for you, right? Yeah. Um, versus the idea of saying, how do we build productive people who can critically think and assess the information that people are giving them so that way they can make conscientious decisions on what the, what they should do with the world around them. But our education system has never sincerely been built for the sake of trying to build productive people in that fashion. It's been built for the sake of trying to build workers yeah. mm -hmm. and to make sure yeah. that our complex of capitalism continues to propagate itself. But I'm going to play the devil's advocate <laughs> for a moment. Mm -hmm. Not saying that I believe this, but I'm just going to I'm going to represent big business okay. in the room yeah. for a second. Okay. And I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to do my thing. Um <laughs> Watch his soul leave his body. <laughs> so, uh, uh, now listen here, guys. Okay, you guys have to understand. In these classrooms, what if a kid transfers from one class or one school to another class in another school, and and they're not learning the same books? They've spent all this time learning con concepts and information from one person just to go to a completely different classroom, and then now they're having to learn something completely different that they're not even on pace with. So it's not fair to the students who are now going to be moving from place to place to be put in these compromising positions. So, what are your thoughts? Like in an in an art aspect? Just in class. Because I had that experience, actually. <laughs> oh, like, shit. when I moved from South Sac to New Hampshire, because mm. uh, uh, California, despite how much money we put into our education system, is one of the worst in the nation. It's really and, far behind. Um, so far behind. With how much money we put in, it's fucking ridiculous. But Buildings. <laughs> buildings. <laughs> buildings and, and white areas. Um, and jobs. Yeah. yeah. More so jobs. here's the thing. This is the trip. And people don't believe me when I say this, but it's absolutely true. I had no concept of what a negative number was when I left in third grade for New Hampshire. Mm. Didn't like I understood that you could owe people money. I didn't understand what a negative number was. Mm -hmm. So I get into class and the teacher on the first day is just checking in. She That's goes like, so what's five minus seven? And I looked at her like. Two. 
<laughs> I had no idea. So I was so far behind. Like she was teaching pre-algebra in in fourth grade, just on a whim mm-hmm. to these kids in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Whereas uh, in yeah. in California, it was uh, obviously not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's happening, mm-hmm. right? Like yeah. that that whole like just students moving from one place to another, and like they're not learning the same things. Like the, our school structure in itself is like specifically geared for certain neighborhoods to, to do better than like other neighborhoods like even the whole like school system and school districts themselves like there's going to be some districts that are actually going to have different curriculums and a more complex cu- mm-hmm. curriculum than like school than schools who like have are like less privileged to have access to those you know like yeah. what they're learning is completely is completely different already in and in itself and, and then they they wait for or they use the colored or the sorry the less privileged uh, <laughs> School districts. Yeah. That's what they. That's they. Blah, 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 blah. That's where they cut off the art programs first right. when it comes yeah. to that budget cut right. because what they don't see that is useful for us because we need to be doing the more arithmetic and all that stuff for us to be propelled in the future. Is that what they're thinking? Is I mean the 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 general consensus is uh, around it is the why should we invest into outside of core curriculum yeah, yeah. if you're not functioning well with core curriculum yeah. but who determines what is valuable in terms of core curriculum yeah, it's business it's the- corporations <laughs> yes, i mean that's the end result like why do you get the degree why is a high school degree important because that receipt looks good when getting a job why, well, <laughs> why is a college degree important mm. Getting the job at the corporation. Getting right. the job at the corporation. Which is actually starting to change. If you check these articles these days, there are companies like Microsoft and Google and Facebook and Netflix. all these other, yeah. Netflix, all these other places that are typically asking for like four-year degrees are now starting to say like, maybe we just need to look for people who have the skills that are requisite to the positions we're trying to hire. Because the shit was getting ridiculous. I applied for a job that wanted a four-year degree for an entry-level position doing like customer service. I'm like, good Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have nah. a standard here you don't meet that standard buddy you can't say hi to people i'm right. serving waffle fries <laughs> doesn't take a degree so so let me let me let me go back let me let, let me do some more right. you know big business let's yeah. big business in particular yeah. i'm going i'm going to to feature somebody by the name of uh caleb i'm not going to throw your last name in there because i'm not trying to get sued by nobody <laughs> um, yeah, this but is, um this why dude our classes should be cut i'm going to highlight a few oh, sections here yeah um, oh yeah He's right. No. Many people are many people are debating whether or not art classes and programs should be cut from schools Time curriculum. Out. What is this voice? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the typical Caleb voice. Bro. <laughs> Many schools are experiencing budget cuts and are choosing <laughs> <up> to, <laughs> to cut art classes and programs for their school to account for the loss of money. People are arguing if it is better to cut art classes to provide an emphasis on core classes or keep these classes to provide students with an outlet for improving a wide variety of developmental processes. The argument in favor of cutting art cla- cut for cutting art classes and programs from schools is that it will force students to focus more on core classes. It is more important for students to do well in classes like math, science, and writing rather than classes that students take to express creativity. Students are more likely to use what they learned in core classes once they graduate. People are forced to use math every day of their life, performing the simplest of tasks. Just going to a grocery store and buying food requires some use of math, whether it is deciding what bills to use to pay for the food or checking to see if the correct change is being given back. Reading and writing are also very important in everyday life. Reading is necessary to acquire more information and learn new tasks. Without the ability to properly read one's level of education while stay while stay stagnant. We'll stay stagnant. Anyway, people also need to know how to read to perform everyday tasks such as reading directions to cook or properly use a product. No duh. The next best argument for cutting art classes and programs is that schools must follow certain laws and procedures. Schools have all schools also have an incentive to cut these art classes because their performance is graded is graded based on the Common Core standards and Common Core standards, which 46 states are implementing into their programs, does not even include art classes in its scoring process. That's the problem. More so, schools 
schools that place low on this scoring process are more likely to receive even more budget cuts. By forcing students to focus on their core classes, schools receive more benefits and less problems. Um, you know what this dude sounds like? He sounds like the dude who buys a video game just to read the instruction manual. <laughs> I, that is a great analogy. Now, 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 I'm going to highlight a few things, and I'm going to release this to to my fellow partners. Go. Um, one, I think you have a misunderstanding of of how arts functions because because uh, <laughs> guess what? By by becoming a better poet, uh-huh. I I am becoming a better reader and and writer for real life scenarios. Uh, versus me taking geometry, I don't know the last time I ever had to use y equals m. X plus what B. is this parabola uh, across the street? <laughs> and, and not to say that those things are not valuable, because I mean, guess what? Geometry plays a role into art. If you ever look at people who do things like um, build buildings, architecture. architecture. <laughs> uh, guess what? Mm-hmm. Any building you're in that has nice architecture is an art form in and of itself, in which you have to now give credit for, in which their core classes then fed into the art form. Uh, Same way that you're looking at any typical reading or writing class goes into the concept of feeding into these things. And when you highlight the fact that Student that class that schools receive less funding when they're doing worse on their Common Core standards, why are we taking money away from schools that are doing worse? (laughs) And saying like, oh yeah, like let's make it more difficult for you amongst the process. How about we instead elect to fund these schools and say, let us give you a bit of a boost for the Mm -hmm. sake of helping you out. And maybe the incentive of having these arts programs will actually help (laughs) y'all to do better. The passion. But I'm going to hop off my soapbox for a second. I'm going to highlight my homies. Let y'all go ahead and dive in. Man, uh, so I want to highlight something he said. Uh, What's his name? Caleb? Uh, it is more it's, important. It, it, his name is Caleb. 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 <laughs> his name he said, is. It is more Caleb. important for students to do well in classes like math, science, and writing rather than classes that students take to express creativity. First of all, isn't creativity taking part of each one of these curricula or these classes here? Math, science, and writing. Like I feel like if you take out art, you take out the ability for a student to to find creativity, to define what they see. Uh, why they see this answer in math is absolute. I mean, we might as well just produce robots at that point, right? Yeah. Because I mean, uh, the whole point, the whole point of like, like creativity is like, the light bulb was a piece of art mm-hmm. when yeah. it first got created. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, oh hey, guess what? It like, started off as an idea, an intrinsic idea that maybe science helped propel forward. So maybe he was paying attention in science and math class, allowed him to have the uh, idea of this artfully done light bulb. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. So I think that Caleb is a robot. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, he might be a robot. He's he might working be a robot. For- <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you look at like like uh, uh, um, Da Vinci. Da Vinci was an artist and a scientist. You look at all these uh, throughout history. That's been a theme. Your artists are your scientists. Why? Because it teaches you to deep, to think deeply and examine yeah. the world around you. Yeah. And it blows my mind that yeah. we're cutting that out of school. And if you're like just forcing kids to just like think of like complete like black and white terms and like, oh, it has to be this way or like you're kind of like making them, you're kind of like robbing that creativity from them and like robbing a part of their brain that has so much potential and so yeah. much and so much power to even like push their creativity and their imagination even further in the in in like the sciences, in mm. math. And, and so like when you just expect students to just like basically do clerical work because you want yeah. them to be adding numbers the whole entire time, right. they're going to be bored and they're going right. to not they're not going to be interested in it at all. And the fact that he's saying that, oh, forcing students to focus on the common core co- classes, like we're doing that now and these students are being left behind. Correct. Yeah. They are absolutely yeah. failing Correct. in the ways that you think that, in the ways that you um, imagine the school should be structured because that's happening now and students are getting left behind. Students are not graduating college. They're not being, they're not interested in the education system that show that doesn't allow them to actually learn. Mm-hmm. And you're forcing them to like think in one sided way when life is not one sided. And, yeah. and the highlight, these, these things do not have to be diametrically opposed. Yeah. I mean, like I'm going to highlight a friend of mine, Brandon Piasecki. He is a phenomenal chemistry teacher. 
Mm. He comes up with rap songs that he makes <laughs> to teach these kids chemistry. And he sends them home with them. Yeah, yeah. Like they're on their Google Classroom. If they're like ever trying to memorize their periodic table mm-hmm. of elements, I remember there's the a whole rap song for them yeah. to be able to listen to, to be able to know the process mm-hmm. and understand everything that's going on in it. Same way that I'm like, what do you, like, so if we're getting rid of art in these classes, right? So are we now not going to read books? <laughs> yeah. Right, because... God forbid an artist wrote a book, right? It would be so bland and trash just well, I mean, to like read information any, without any kind of creativity behind it. I mean, like any book, like yeah. we all like in teaching English now in high school, we read Edgar Allan Poe. I don't want to read Edgar Allan Poe, first of all, <laughs> but we read him. But if if we removed art from classes, the then the that boots. would then that wouldn't even be involved in our classrooms. Like that wouldn't be there. The music that you, I'm sure, listen to while you're at work, Caleb, uh, would no longer be <laughs> would no longer be attack. here. He only listens to beeps and boops from the computer. <laughs> and, and you know what's crazy? <laughs> this particular individual comes from a very artistically like popular place san francisco state university yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. san francisco yeah. is like a uh, birthplace to so much art uh, it's yeah, crazy and this is i'm wondering what school you went to man <laughs> oh i see it here what do they teach you bro and a and ao and i'm going i'm going to throw this out here we we've done our research and being able to find like both pros and cons for these things and there's not many cons in taking art out of school. There's not many pros for taking art out of school. In fact, there's ex- there's more detrimental things that end up happening in these scenarios than there are positive things. And some of the but some of the the positives of keeping art in the schools are found in results such as Arts Ed Search. You can find this in the link in our description below. Results from the case studies of our secondary schools indicated positive effects of arts education and technical knowledge. Technical being common core standard Mm -hmm. and skills in specific art form of study, as well as a heightened sense of enjoyment, fulfillment, and stress relief. Mm -hmm. Other effects were increased knowledge of social and cultural issues. If you notice, one of the biggest things that art allows for people to do is develop better social and emotional skills, which are required to be good people. I mean, customer service for that uh, pencil pusher job you want us to have so bad. (laughs) (laughs) Development of creativity and thinking skills, enhanced communication and expressive skills, and increased self-confidence, self-esteem, and teamwork skills. These are all things in which companies these days are looking for. Because guess what? For so long, we have been producing workaholic folks yeah. who have no self-worth in themselves outside of the work that they do and are not healthy Become people robots. when they leave work Become that robots. inevitably we end up having higher suicide rates. Yeah. We end up dealing with people who are have zero fulfillment in their jobs. And that's why we as artists end up getting looked mm-hmm. weird at by the rest of the world when we say, hey, we want to work doing something we love for the rest of our lives. And we have parents and grandparents to say, dreaded. why don't you just work a job for 40 years that you absolutely hate right. yeah. and end up retiring? Well, and and in their defense, like I, I had a long sit down talk with my mom a few years ago, and it's just like that whole side is easy to get bitter about as an artist, but it's from a place of genuine concern because True. that's mm, what that's I, how they grew up. Yeah. Exactly, that's how they grew up. It's like you want to be an artist, so you're going to be starving, so you're not going to have a future, you're not going to have mm. a home, you're going to be probably on the streets. I don't want that for my kids, and that's why a lot of young artists get dissuaded from approaching the arts, is because we've. Like I said at the start, we've always had this notion towards art that it is bad for you. Mm-hmm. Mm. It doesn't make enough money. It doesn't that, make enough money. Make you enough can't enough support money. yourself yeah. on it. Why would you even do it? And here's the frustrating part That's about we value as a society. Here's the frustrating. By the way, you have to move that up a little bit so that way you guys can hear it. Okay. Um, but here's a, here's the frustrating aspect of that. People don't repre- people don't fully understand how much art they're involved in on a daily basis, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, this phone, right? Like, this phone is a piece of art that nobody ever thinks about yeah. being a piece of art. Yeah. Because if we were to simply take, if we were to remain stagnant in our concept of, like, just learn typical knowledge that has no creative, creative aspect to it, Wi-Fi wouldn't be a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We would still be on the dial-up where you can't call, no, yeah. you, where you can't make phone calls right, while you're on the internet, internet more, no more. Yeah. You are now we would still be on fat back televisions. <laughs> <laughs> like, we'd still be on them brick phones. Uh-huh. And 
no like the shoes that people go out and purchase that they enjoy the clothes yeah. that folks wear yeah. like the fact that you're rocking glasses that look stylish right now versus just a functional piece of glass that they could put <laughs> over your face like focal <laughs> you know what i mean like people yeah. take for granted so much of the art that ends up being poured into these things and the fact that guess what your common core classes feed into helping people do art better. Yeah. Yeah. Like integrated. all jobs are and this are essentially an, an art form in a way. Yeah. And we but, gotta like teach our students to be like problem solvers and be creative and think outside of like the possible possibilities. And I think art allows us to do that, to think outside of the box, allows us to like tap into that creativity to be like, okay, these answers are not working for this problem anymore. Yeah. Like they're no longer the right answers. So how are we gonna figure out and imagine and create a world that we can actually live in by like creating the answers that aren't mm. even there yet. Right? Yeah. Now there's a whole other aspect though, and this is a valid point that how art is taught in schools mm. is mm. typically underwhelming. Here's my introduction <laughs> to poetry. And <laughs> says 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 oh boy, uh, what's his name? Caleb. Yeah. Very uh, very underwhelming. <laughs> very underwhelming because like here's my introduction to poetry in high school. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more temperate. It was from a teacher who didn't care, who was just doing the poetry because someone told her to do a poetry yeah. section. Yeah. And they popcorn it around the class to kids who have no context for it, mm. who don't understand uh, why it's important to even learn poetry in the first mm. place. And it's not being taught by a teacher who... Uh, actually cares about the actually material. cares about mm. it yeah. and cares how can the teacher care in the first place that's a whole separate issue when <laughs> they have so much stress on top of being a teacher yeah. as you can say mm. <laughs> I, I we'll have wanna, our day on that one <laughs> <laughs> i want to pull off of uh, what stacy and brandon said there was a so you said that well both of you are saying that art promotes creativity right mm -hmm. problem solving you should have as an artist i believe we probably have an advantage of being able to get a issue mm -hmm. and find 10 solutions for it not yeah. just being stuck at a dead end oh this won't work yeah. no now that you have this little little bit of taste of art and creativity and you can find different ways to make it work versus just stopping at the dead end answer yeah. and i think uh to be honest i use that on a daily day basis day-to-day -day basis because my job now requires me to think outside the box mm. i have never in my life recorded um a dermatologist do a facial treatment to somebody, but I had to be artistic <laughs> and be like, yo, how can I capture this in a good way? Yeah. In terms of making me money, in terms of making her money, making her business look better. Um, so I get opportunities my way every day where I have to think outside that box. Mm -hmm. And God forbid if I didn't have art in my classroom, uh, I actually did have a couple of teachers that did care about art, mm -hmm. which is That's pretty cool. dope. And then another, I uh, had parents that cared about art, which mm -hmm. I'm blessed to have. Mm -hmm. And I believe I have a one-up on people because I have an artistic point of view. Yeah, that's true. And let's and let's define art here yeah. too. Cuz oftentimes when I think somebody like Caleb in this scenario is thinking about art, he's thinking about the class where they walk in and they're drawing and they're painting. Yes. And it, and that's the only concept of art that he's thinking You're about. You're like recreating what's in front of you. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But that still even in there has intrinsic value, which I'm not going to I'm not going to knock. But art is wide ranging in its in its definition. The sports that you go watch on television are an art form. Mm -hmm. The technology that we use are art forms. The music, the clothes, all of that stuff is art forms. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to highlight a statistic from brookings.edu on their article, New Evidence of the Benefits of Art Education. And they, they did a lot of studies on this. Mm -hmm. And it says, when we restrict our analysis to elementary schools, which comprised 86% of the sample size we had mm -hmm. and were the primary target of the program, we also find that increases in arts learning positivity po <laughs> increases in arts learning positively and significantly affects students school engagement college aspirations and their inclinations to draw upon works of art as a means for empathizing with others mm -hmm. in terms of school engagement students in the treatment program were more likely to agree that the school is enjoyable makes them think about things in new ways and that their school offers programs classes and activities that keep them interested in school we generally did not find evidence to suggest significant impacts on students math reading or science achievement attendance or our other survey outcomes which we discuss in our full 
report, mm -hmm. meaning that these programs did not detrimentally impact mm -hmm. those areas, mm -hmm. meaning that students were not now suddenly doing worse in English, doing worse in math, they have doing worse in science because they were doing an art class, mm -hmm. meaning that they were actually continuing to maintain in what they were doing in those places. Yeah. And guess what? The, we, we in America love to highlight, yo, go to college, get a job after you, you know, like do all that. And if that is exactly what you guys want from us, then it says here that college aspirations are grown through these art programs. And the fact of the matter is we're running into more issues in the world because we're, we're, we're getting into a society where we've never been before, mm -hmm. where we have like, not to say that everybody is privileged, but we live in a time now where we live in a very privileged society in general compared yeah. to like years ago mm -hmm. where like as soon as the lights, as soon as the sun went down, essentially people could run into a village and murder everybody if they wanted yeah. to. Good you know Lord. I mean? <laughs> like, like a bit like. What an artistic <laughs> imagination you have. <laughs> <laughs> like like it, is, it is indeed a different world out there. And yeah. we need new solutions. And in order right. to get to these new solutions, we need people to be able to, as Stacy said, think outside of the box, mm -hmm. to be able to look at be able to look at a, an issue from fifteen different angles and say mm -hmm. that could work, that could work. Be, not be afraid to fail in those mm -hmm. scenarios, and being able to pick the best one out of the fifteen solutions you may have come with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And trial and error that joint. Yeah. Yeah. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. and and this will be my last comment I'll make on it. <laughs> Art gave me a place. In particular, poetry gave me a place where I could fail and not feel like a failure for mm, probably the first yeah. time. Where it was like, hey, it's okay. You tried it. Yeah. It don't like, like it doesn't matter whether or not it came out great or didn't come out great. It's and the fact no that there's no real you did meaning it. to either of those. It's just about like, did you express yourself? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so there's, I, I find so much value in being able to teach people that failure is not the end of the road. Yeah. And yeah. I believe that art, especially in schools mm -hmm. where it's only pass or fail. Right. <laughs> you need that little bit of, uh, that little, yeah, you're not going to pass or fail this one at all. So go ahead and just take your time. You know what I mean? And do what you do. And so yeah. closing remarks. I mean, that's really like an indictment on the entire education system when you think about it, because it's so often we do treat kids like failures. I'm a product of that. I got a whole poem about it. I did it at Iowa. Oh, you want to spit that real quick? Bro? You got uh, that on the phone? I'll, I'll try and dig it up. I could do it at the end. Okay. Yeah. But um, and the thing is that we treat kids like failures, and they grow up thinking they're failures, and then they become dysfunctional because mm -hmm. your whole life you've been told you're a failure. Why would you ever think otherwise? Yeah. Now you and, can't uh, communicate with people, and now you don't know how to express yourself. Yeah, yeah and you're now afraid you to express to, yeah. yourself. Yeah. And you know, art through yeah. for me since I graduated from high school has been the empowering thing that has pulled me out of that mindset of failure. And now I'm touring all over the world and doing all sorts of shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, well, just to kind of reemphasize its impact on me, art has been able to give me the 15 different pathways to one solution and having that ability to pick the best solution. Uh, and then I learned that the best solution isn't for other people, it's for what's benefits to myself. Because mm. then my pursuing art has what done wonders for me. Uh, I was able to quit a job because I found that art could be more profitable than working behind a desk answering phones for people and repairing their uh, their issues. When I can use my issues I repair to help other people promote their product and brands and stuff like that. So art has tremendously impacted me in a very beneficial way. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to add like growing up in specifically like Chinese American community that like most of the students who go on and like go to those big universities, you know, um, they actually were all artistically inclined. They did so well in their classes, but they also had like this extracurricular outside um, that, you know, because there have been so many studies that show the benefits of art on um, the brain in terms of like memory, in terms of learning, in terms of like just being able to problem solve and like critically think. Um, and so I think that like we know like there, I don't, I don't, um, I, I understand why arts get cut because like it's the it's not in the budget or like art supplies like are expensive or like they'd rather, you know, invest in like 
books or stuff instead of like paintbrushes or musical instruments and stuff. But like writing in itself is an art form. And mm. like Audre Lorde, um, she said that Theorist. she's a feminist theorist. Um, she said that like writing is the most economic form of art that there is because all you need is a pen and a paper in your brain. And so like you don't need to invest in a lot of money to teach stu- to teach students or kids like to write poetry, to journal, to, you know, create things that are outside of the outside of the box. You don't, um, you just, uh, have to instill like that, that inspiration that art is just as important as like those, the STEM or science technology. Yeah. (laughs) Math and science. Right. I mean, like just in itself, like Albert Einstein, he had to like create a new theory because the the answers that were there, like didn't exist yet. And so he in itself was like, became an artist in his own field and like to be able to create and tap into that. Um, in his in in and on himself like that was just so it changed the world um, and it changed the way that we think and I think that like art allows us to do that so man yeah. yo factual factual and so very strong opinions. I'm gonna I'm, I, I'm going to I'm going to highlight a particular individual I actually don't even know this individual's name but a beautiful example of this in terms of and it's I mean they're they're expensive now but they used to be cheap there's a uh, there's a gentleman with Lincoln Unified who does an entire after school program based around Legos with uh, mm. first through sixth graders, oh. and people are like, "What are you talking about Legos and art for?" Yeah. Legos are one of the most beautiful things at a young age that give kids an opportunity to be able to just create yes. and then destroy yes. and then recreate <laughs> with with no consequence, and he's teaching them these skills and these opportunities and giving them these opportunities at such a young age to be able to create something. And so um, shout outs to you. I'll find out your name and I'll throw you down below and hopefully we can get you booked for some more stuff. But were you able to find your poem? Yeah. All right. Pull over that mic and this will be our closing statement. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It's called Conveyor Belt Kids. It's real short. How the public education system treats people with mental health issues. We were conveyor belt kids, pushed on, treated like failures from the start, and so failures we'd become. In retrospect, I do think it's odd how in 12 years, no one ever asked me why I stopped caring about my grades. What they would have found is undiagnosed major depression and untreated childhood trauma, but failure is an easy carpet to sweep troubled kids under. Mm. Fun fact. When your week is spent trying to kill yourself, it's real hard to give a shit about pre-algebra. But we'd sooner brand children as failures and examine the system that fails and would sooner overwhelm teachers with 50 students and give a damn about what happens after graduation. Pop quiz. This is true. My GPA was 1.7. Who failed me? Dang. Thank you all for tuning in. You failed him. Poet. You, you, no. I'm sorry for yelling in the podcast. But you, you. No, and, and I should say that, like, with all my depression stuff, it wasn't that I was a dumb kid. It's that I just didn't care about life, and nobody spotted that, mm. and nobody addressed that, and that's what the poem's about. Yeah. And you guys have tuned in for the Poets <laughs> and Politics podcast session number two. Two cents. So um, make sure that you guys tune in next month. Uh, our question of the day for y'all today would be, um, should we start having art classes, whether they be painting, whether they be poetry, whether they be creative writing, whatever type of art they would like to have offered be part of the core curriculum of our student populations between first through 12th grade. Because I know kindergartners are already doing art and they seem to be enjoying themselves. (laughs) So And learning. (laughs) uh, But we out here, we love y'all, and then we'll catch y'all at the next podcast. (laughs) And...